In earlier videos, we defined four linear dependent sources, voltage controlled current source, a voltage controlled voltage source, a current controlled current source, and a current controlled voltage source. And we use these dependent sources to model semiconductor devices such as operational amplifiers or op amps and transistors. Also, we're going to focus our discussion on a transistor model now where we're going to describe the voltages and currents at its external terminals. However, the model that we're studying here does not describe the transistor's physical structure or charge flow. We'll focus our study again towards bipolar junction transistors and it will serve as an important prelude to the study of operational amplifiers. The symbol for the BJT is shown here and it's basically a three terminal device one is connected or labeled as a va base, the other terminal is known as the collector, and the third terminal is known as the emitter. The voltages VBE and VCE are called the base emitter voltage as VBE here, and VCE here is known as the collector emitter voltage. We have three currents going into this transistor, IB the base current, IC the collector current, and IE the emitter current, and applying a KCL to the BJT yields the following such that IE is equal to the base current plus the collector current, IC. This means that only two of the three currents can independently be specified. However, we normally work with IB and IC and then use the KCL to find IE when needed. The BJT's large signal model is defined in terms of signals IB and VBE. These are our input signals. And our output signals is IC and VCE. Now for the BJT shown here, the model applies to a region in which these signals are never negative. And then within this region there are three possible operating modes. Shown here, these operating modes is known as the active region, the cutoff region, and the saturation region. In the active mode, the dominant feature of the BAGT is that the collector current is controlled by the base current as well as VBE, which is constant. In other words, the active mode requires that IC is equal to beta, where beta is constant, times IB, and that VBE is equal to V gamma which is our threshold voltage in order for this transistor co to conduct. So the proportionality factor beta here is called the forward current gain and it typically ranges from 50 to 700. The constant V gamma here is called the threshold voltage which is normally less than a volt. For silicon it's about 0.7, for germanium it's about 0.2. So in our active mode we have a beta IB where the base current controls this collector current and that, that VBE in order for this to operate must be greater than V gamma, our threshold voltage. We have two additional operating modes at the boundary of the BJT's operating region. Let's look at the case when IB is equal to zero. When that, that implies that IC is equal to zero. In this mode, the transistor is cut off and the device acts like an open circuit between the collector and emitter. So this is known as the cutoff mode. However, when VCE is equal to zero and VBE is equal to V gamma, the transistor is in saturated mode and the device, in essence, acts like a short circuit 
between the collector and emitter. So these two modes are summarizing by writing such that the cutoff mode has IB is equal to zero and IC is equal to zero. In the saturation mode we have VCE is equal to zero and VBE is equal to V gamma our threshold voltage. So this is uh, what we have in our transistor when it is operating in one of these three modes, active, cutoff, or saturation. When looking at the cutoff and saturation regions, again where the cutoff acts like an open and the saturation acts like a short, we have boundaries of the collector current where it's between zero and the short circuit current and that for the open circuit voltage it's between VOC and zero as shown here. Now with this background we are prepared to analyze the transistor circuit which I'll show next. However our analysis objective is to find the output currents IC and then the voltage VCE and to do this we know that the transistors operating mode must be known. To find the operating mode we must use two facts and again we're going back to this equation that the lower bounds in equation 410 means that IC and VCE cannot be negative since IC has to be greater than zero and VCE has to be greater than zero. Also the upper bounds depends on the rest of the circuit. The next video will analyze a typical transistor configuration known as the common emitter circuit.